The right and left side of the thorax cannot be considered identical. The areola cannot be considered to be at the centre of the breast either. A new concept in terms of implantable mammary processes, the asymmetrical implant by polyimplant prothèse, a solution that takes into account the physiological links between breasts and bust, thanks to the use of a different implant for the right and for the left breast. Right and left asymmetrical mammary implants also enable significant projections to be obtained while preserving the natural aspect of the breast. The asymmetrical implant may be pre-filled with cohesive silicon gel or with hydrogel. The prosthesis comes in a double blister pack that takes on the exact shape of the implant, thus ensuring its integrity. On the top part of both the right and the left implant, you can clearly see the tapered profile that prevents the staircase effect, often caused by round implants implanted in a retroglandular position. By the external quadrant, i.e. close to the sternum, the contour of the implant is also tapered. The projection is moreover slightly off-centre, thus taking into account the anatomical position of the areola. It is therefore possible to implant significant volumes while preserving the breast's natural aspect. At the back, the implant is concave, although the concavity is more marked on the horizontal than on the vertical plane. The implant therefore adjusts itself perfectly to the shape of the thorax and will thus not end up rotating. On this patient that underwent a mammary increase, the first step will consist in determining the landmarks that will show the detachment areas required to install the prosthesis. First of all, by the sternum, a width equivalent to that of two fingers is determined, that is to say the width of one finger on either side of the median line. The undermammary path that will be followed is drawn. As for the upper landmarks, the median line is defined with regards to the top of the sternal manubrium, as well as the clavicular landmark. The detachment will go as far as about the width of two fingers below the lower limit of the clavicle. The outer limit of the detachment will be set with regards to a vertical line starting from the median part of the axillary hollow. The landmark for the approach passage will consist of a trans areola passage crossing the foot of the nipple. This incision enables a third of its path to be hidden in the foot of the nipple. The dissection is conducted in an exsanguine manner along a trans areola line over a width of around 4 cm ending on the pectoral plan. And that can easily be located by its oblique fibers. Once the pectoral muscle has been revealed, the detachment will continue above its paramysium, enabling the pre-established limits of the detachment to be reached. By using his fingers to check the detachment, the surgeon can make sure that there are no more adhesions likely to create straps that often leave marks once the implant has definitely been placed. Whether or not a drainage should previously be placed remains an academic matter. The identical procedure is followed for the contralateral breast. The detachment is conducted so that the implant is placed in a retrogranular position, while constantly checking the pre-established limits of its chamber. The detachment is completed generously by hand to eliminate any straps.
the asymmetrical implant is inserted easily by hand. The tactile landmarks situated on the posterior side of the prosthesis, two towards the top, one towards the bottom, ensure the correct position of the prosthesis within its chamber. Thanks to the distortion capacity of the prosthesis, volumes of 380, even 400 cubic centimetres are easily implanted through such trans-areolar approaches. The closure of the posterior plane of the breast with dissolvable separate stitches consists in giving it its natural shape around its application area in front of the pectoral muscle. The closure is continued in a standard manner in two stages by using dissolvable thread, separate stitches and intradermic overcasting. <laughs>